All right, I have a blog called Python by Night, and um, we are, of course, at the Python Web Conference 2022, and my talk here is Adding RSS, Yes. Uh, my name is Mario Munoz, you may already know that, and we'll, well, what is RSS? <laughs> Most of us probably know what that is. Really simple syndication. It provides a standard way for websites to publish updates. We, it's basically a way that uh, we can get updates that we want to see. <laughs> uh, it's a, an XML file that's created by the website publisher. In this case, uh, whoever is creating your website. For me, uh, well, I have a question here. Should I add RSS? Should you add it to your blog or your website? The answer is yes. No questions, no, no further comment on that. Adding RSS to Python by night is what I wanted to talk about. I built my website on fast API. I use Jinja templates to generate um, my HTML and it can generate XML as well. Um, the first step I took to create an RSS feed was to, well, you know, figure out what the spec was. Uh, I have a link here. Some of you may have seen this, the RSS advisory board. It has a uh, a spec library, which tells you all the fields that you need, the ones that are optional, the ones that are required. It even had a sample file. This is kind of where I started. All right, I think I could create that with a Jinja template. So um, that was my first step. And I tried to mock the XML to try to see what it would look like. Uh, this is at its simplest, kind of what I was going for, but I also wanted to include links to some of my latest articles. So my second step was to uh, use Jinja templates, to use a Jinja template that would include the variables for the dynamic data, which usually will include the article title, the name, and the description, the date, title, date, description of my latest articles. So my Jinja template ended up looking a little bit like this. These, um, don't worry about the macro just yet. That's That comes into play down here, but you'll see the pieces with little curly brackets. Those are variables that are sent from the Python app that um, you know, at each request, it, it sends this to the template. So those are the variables. And then I have this piece of code down here that's the macro that yeah, for those of you that aren't familiar with Jinja templates, it's just basically a way to do to do a function, kind of kind of a Pythonic function. Uh, so that was step three was to use a macro to build dynamic data so that I could cycle through all my latest articles and uh, you know extract all the information that I needed from each one of them. The title, a slug which I needed to include a direct link through the RSS feed, the description, and the publish date. So this is what my macro looks like. Um, it's it when it populates when it populates with these variables. This is what an item looks like. Uh, so looping through my articles, it'll insert an, an item title, the link, which is the slug that I'm bringing in, the description and the published state. Step four was to add the logic in my Fast API application. So I make a database call that pulls all my recent articles. And I send that data to the template. It looks a little bit like this. Um, I'm making a database call here that goes into my RSS articles. And then I send that to the template with, with, these, uh, with the list of articles. And then that list of articles is what gets looped through to provide the final XML feed. And if you'll look at my website, uh, I have an article about that on my blog about how I did that a little bit more in depth, but the final product then if you click oh watch this is not working here. <laughs> this is great now my RSS button is working, but at one point it was working it oh there it is it'll give you the. Um, the feed just based off of that template so that's my lightning talk. <laughs>